Welcome to Garage Groove. Welcome to the shop. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this new episode of Garage Groove. Thank you for joining us. Today, we got a very special episode for you, something we had already talked about. We're going to take that TL for a ride today. Now, uh, this, this is not going to be one of those uh, kind of go around the block type of rides. We're going to go for a ride, 30, 40, 50 miles. I don't know what, but we'll, uh, we'll look into that. But uh, before we get into that, uh, let's talk about a couple things. So now, last episode, when we uh, discussed the, the, the TL a little bit. I said, you know, we did a couple other things to it. Then I went on and showed you some decals and stuff. It was ridiculous because the decals were already done. Uh, sometimes I get in front of the camera and I can't remember everything I have to say. The two things that we had to do off camera afterwards, it, I'll show you that right now. So first was this kickstand. We had to build the kickstand. Now what happens is uh, once your wheelbase shortens up and the bike goes uh, gets taller, the original kickstand wasn't good enough anymore. So what I did was I took a really nice piece of steel. Look at that. Solid all the way through. And that's we, we took three inches, we cut that off, and then I, in fact, this is part of, what we did was we, uh, we slimmed it down and we cut it. We cut it right here. Well, we cut it in half here. You can see it's cut here and then the tube uh, that solid piece goes up in here this far and down here it goes about this far and then we added this square piece on top just as an extra brace. So that's number one. That's what we did. The other thing that happened was this is the original uh, chain slide. You can see it's busted. It got tore up. It got tore up because, uh, you know, whenever you go messing with factory stuff, you know, we're, we're modifying these bikes, you know. This is not the way the engineers wanted this thing. So you run into stupid stuff like this. What happened was this material is made up of, it's kind of like a mix between rubber and plastic. So it's, uh, it's good, but it's not good enough. Uh, what happened is as this swing arm... Uh, went down it created more drag on this and uh, after about 150 miles it ate that right up so what I did was I did something really cool I found uh, another material that's even better you can see this hunk taken out what is this this is a plastic cutting board. It is awesome plastic, very nice plastic, very hard, and uh, it's really good, you know. So what we did was, what I did was, uh, let's get the flashlight here. I cut out a piece. You can see, it's right here. You see the gray piece? It goes right here, and it goes, extends all the way back there. And the chain rides on it. And it's holding up very nicely. Right? So I've seen a lot of videos. I've seen a lot of videos about people when they make these chain sliders. They spend so much time uh, filing it and, you know, cutting the grooves in it and uh, getting it just right. You don't have to do that. See, the thing is, whenever uh, plastic and metal meet, the metal's gonna win, okay? 
and that's just how it is. When so I didn't I didn't do any of that stuff. All I did was I uh, made the piece. All you got to do is make sure it covers the complete area where the chain's going to run, and then the chain is going to cut its own groove. It's not going to hurt the chain any because it's metal. The metal's going to win. It's not going to it's not going to defect the chain even one percent. It's not going to do anything to it. The plastic's simply going to move out of the way, and the chain is going to cut the most precise groove what it wants right now if we made that out of stone <laughs> that'd be a different story the chain is going to lose uh, you'd probably get 10 15 miles and your chain's going to be nothing left right so those are the two things that we did consequently look how nice this wheel spins man very smooth very smooth that's what we want very nice and then what I use is uh, I use this stuff right here it's a white lithium grease I kind of use that on there and it helps things slide along I don't know maybe every couple hundred miles or so right so that th those are the the real updates that we did to the bike the decals were already done so I wanted to uh, hit on that here's the other thing I had somebody uh, locally who watches the channel a friend of mine approached me about something he said uh, you know <clears throat> you're always uh, uh, talking down these bikes that are lowered and stretched out like it's wrong right and um, I, I would have to agree with them you know I, I did have that kind of a demeanor like that's wrong it, sh it looks dumb and all of that that's not what I mean I, and I apologize if that's how it's taken those bikes even the TL the Jixer you know when they're flat like that and stretched out there is a purpose for that those are great for drag racing and so it's not wrong to have a bike lowered and stretched out it's not wrong at all in fact they do it for show too I, I, it, it looks kind of cool if it's done right these bikes weren't done right but when they're done right they look really good you know show bikes are lowered and stretched they look awesome man I love that stuff but their purpose in the race world is for drag racing okay I don't do drag racing so I have to take that back so when I say I'm going to fix the stance on this, I shouldn't word, use the word fix. I should say change, right? Because when they're lowered and stretched out, they are good for drag racing. They're just not good for the street because I, I don't do drag racing. I just run around the streets with them. And uh, so that's what we do. In any case, we're going to take this bike and we're going to put some miles on it today. And... I want you guys to join me. So today's episode is going to be about taking a ride on this TL. Come join us. We'll see you soon. So that's what we got going on here. The other thing we have is uh, we're doing mileage on this thing. So I was kind of wrong when I said I already put a couple hundred miles on it. The fact is I had over 300 on it. So what we what I did is this right here is our trip meter so we're going to be starting at a certain trip meter let's see what does it say 384.8 know if you can see it 384.8 that's how many miles that is exactly how many miles I have put on this bike since we it's built. It's a beautiful early October day today. Wonderful. The temperature is very rideable. And you can see, look at that beautiful sunshine. Perfect skies. And we're gonna take this hot rod out uh, for a joy ride.
what a great day for a bike ride and uh, the sun shining we're gonna be uh, talking about a lot of different uh, things about the TL you know because it started uh, this this bike uh, came into my possession actually in 2011 and then uh, I rode it for two or three years just the way I got it it, it was a very ugly bike uh, but I, I always wanted the v-twin uh, race bike and uh, that was my prime uh, my primary interest in purchasing this bike is because it was a v-twin um, but before we get into all that uh, let's talk about a little bit of where we're going here so we're gonna be going uh, through a lot of these little towns you're gonna see a lot of uh, really good uh, scenery open fields and uh, probably a lot of even fall colors I don't know if they've quite set in but uh, here we're going through a little town uh, we're gonna be passing through a school zone and then we're gonna start revving up the bike a little bit getting out of town but there's no one point where you know you can really open this bike up there, there's some 55 mile zones but other than that um, but that, that's fine it's a really great route that I'm taking I'm not sure um, let these guys go here I'll let these all of them go first there we go uh, we're gonna come up here on the school zone so we got to go slow here but uh, it's just a lot of good scenery uh, today in any case uh, so yeah the TL is uh, you know I, I got this bike in 2011 and I was attracted to it because it was a v-twin bike now I was originally looking for the RC 51 and they had them they were just very expensive um, and then I started reading up on you know the Suzuki's version of the RC 51 and the more I read about it the more intrigued I became and then uh, lo and behold uh, on Craigslist a guy was selling one that was not too far from where I was living so I went and looked at it and <clears throat> it looked uh, quite here we're gonna start speeding up here a little bit uh, it, it looked kind of uh, you know weird to me because you know I pictured it I, I had seen a lot of uh, images of the RC 51 and I, I even saw some images of the TL and this thing was modified so you know I didn't know I was coming upon a modified bike you know because the pictures they had uh, shown on the advertisement uh, they, they were more of the original bike probably before they modified it so anyways I it, you know they're kind of hard to come by so I, I I picked it up and then I, I rode it just just like that uh, I bought it in 2011 and then I rode it uh, probably about three or four years you know and it was always smoking a little bit and the more I rode it in the the next uh, you know two three years that I, the first two three years that I owned it the smoking just became worse and worse to the point where in 2014 or 15 I, I think it was 15 that I actually redid the motor on it um, to get rid of the smoking and these are uh, Nicosil lined cylinders so I didn't really have to bore them uh, I just replaced uh, their the cylinders were in good shape, but the uh, Rings were wore pretty bad. We're gonna go through some uh, wooded area here. It looks really nice The fall colors have not quite uh, Came in yet, but it's it looks beautiful But anyways, uh, the cylinders uh, were nickel cell, so I just uh, refreshing the, the rings and we put new rings in it and new gaskets and the, did, redid the whole top end and uh, 
the bike's been running beautiful since, you know. The TL1000 motor is a, is a, a gear-driven cam. There's not a chain. So you can hear that cam whining. And that's, <laughs> it sounds really cool. It's a really neat bike. We're going to come up to the stop sign here. And then uh, we're going to make a right-hand turn. And we're going to head out kind of kind of getting away from uh, the traffic areas whatever areas that we were coming upon we're gonna pass all that here the sunshine really nice but uh, so yeah I uh, refreshed the motor in 2015 uh, and then at that time I had also changed uh, the plastic on it This light is very long Now we start heading out of town very nice road here Anyways, uh, we uh, refreshed the motor on this thing, but I I never did anything with the plastic. Well, I did change the plastic once, so the bike was originally a really putrid-looking yellow, almost like the yellow uh, here you see on the road, and uh, it was bright, but. It wasn't so much the color I didn't like. I don't mind color yellow. But it was just there. It was cracked and it was in bad shape. There was uh, decals missing and many many cracks on the on the plastic. So I uh, changed the plastic on it. I went through uh, a, a company and uh, on eBay and it was through China. I had to wait like two months to get the plastic. And when they finally sent them, they were wrong. They were black with flames. I'm not. I don't really like flames. So it came with uh, it came with flames on it. I'm gonna pass this guy. Right here. Both of these and, uh, but it came it came with uh, the flames on it, and it was a mistake because I had ordered embraced plastics. You know, I had all the the, the uh, sponsors and stuff like that. And that's not what these plastics were. So I but I waited so long for them because they came from China. So um, they made it right by just refunding me a hundred dollars uh, of my three. I think I paid three fifty back then, three sixty or something like that, and they gave me a hundred back. So I just I just kept them, and uh, my bike went from being yellow to black. But at least the plastics were in really good shape. You know, they're brand new. I got rid of the old ones. I, in fact, sold the old ones. Somebody came and bought them. I got 50 bucks for them, so I just got rid of them. They're in real bad shape. So then, uh, that, that's how I ran the bike from basically 2015 till now. You know, I had the motor done. I had uh, the new plastic on it, which were a mistake, but I kept them. And then we ran it, you know. Uh, the swing, the swing arm came extended from the previous guy and uh, ran for several years. I put a lot of miles on it and it ran great, you know. And then, uh, you know, we made a point of fixing the stance of the bike and changing the plastics up a little bit so we painted them and um, this is what we got. We're very happy with it. The bike runs awesome. Pulls really good. I could easily pass this guy, but uh, we're just gonna hold back. Now the interesting thing about this bike is it's a six-speed, so um, that's not what's interesting. What? what because a lot of bikes are six-speed. What's interesting is. The ratio, the close ratio between 
Bible speaks. That that's what's really cool. That's what really lets you know that this is a race bike, you know. When you shift from any gear up, your RPMs virtually never drop. You know, it it's designed to stay in that power band. You're always going to be around that f uh, four to six uh, thousand RPM, right in that sweet spot. Uh, I should say five to seven. It's more like five to seven thousand RPM. So when I shift from, here's a biker right here. I always say hi to, hi to bikers. Uh, when you shift from third to fourth, and fourth to fifth, and even fifth to sixth, you're always staying right around that five to six to seven thousand RPM. You know, the, the bike just stays in that. I'm gonna get on it here a little bit. here behind a bus I generally don't like passing school buses um, we'll just ride this guy out you know, he's probably carrying a bunch of kids we're just gonna ride him out I think we're gonna pull over here in a, in a little bit anyways take a break talk about uh, our scenery and see how the bike's doing never really got the opportunity to pass the bus I, I generally don't uh, like passing buses anyways, but this guy stayed with us for for the long term. I thought he would turn off somewhere, but That's okay. I, I think I uh, We'll stop right here. We'll pull over here Okay, so we have stopped at our first uh, location here. We're about 20 miles out. Um, bike's running really good, real fun. There's been some traffic though, it's kind of slowing me down, but we're right across from a Six Flag uh, theme park. See the big trucks going by. And we've done probably about 25 miles. 28 miles something like that I don't know we'll 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 find out what we exactly do when we get home but it's a really nice setting out here it's beautiful fall early October day the sun's just beating really good day for riding and uh, let's take a look you see how That material seems to be holding up pretty decent. And there's our TL. And we're going to hop right back on it. And we're going to go ahead and do our thing. So we'll see you on the road. Take it easy.
we're back on the road we're gonna get going again um, that little spot we just stopped at that was a theme park that we take the kids to quite often in fact we went there several times uh, just this last summer they love it and it's very convenient for us it's only about a half an hour from our house and um, it's a good time so we're gonna continue right here uh, our route has taken us further south and then we're gonna loop around and head back home but somewhere here um, I'm gonna stop at a gas station put some uh, gas in this thing but these are little towns and we got a little stop light coming up here and um, we're gonna make a left turn to continue heading south actually um, there should be a gas station shortly after I think we should put some some fuel in here I'll probably get a little something to drink on the road here's our turn right here let's make a left turn right here and this is actually taking us south because we're gonna we're gonna go down here a little ways about a mile or so we're gonna make a right turn So we're gonna go up here a little bit and we're gonna start slowing down um, we're gonna be heading into a, a small town and we're gonna start looking for our gas station what a beautiful day though man a uh, perfect day for a ride like this and uh, the temperature is perfect too you know race bikes especially like this they're very finicky about proper temperatures and uh, this bike runs really good at where we're at right now we're we're in about the high 60s uh mid to high 60s that's where it really performs the best once you start getting into 80s and 90s you know the bike really doesn't like it at that time so we're gonna go ahead and make our left turn we're gonna go up a little bit ahead and we're gonna see a plaza we're gonna make a right turn and then we should see our gas station i think i'll stop and get something to drink also but yeah the temperature uh, is very important for uh, fine tuned race bikes like this you know, they definitely perform better at, at uh, one temperature than they do at another you know so let's get some gas in this thing Let's get a little bit of a little bit to drink. I'm gonna grab uh, something cold to drink, and then we'll get back on the road. Uh, start heading back. Beautiful day though.
don't think this guy in the, this truck likes me. I see him. He keeps uh, looking in the rear view mirror. Checking. Uh, I think if, if it was up to him, he would have got away from me. He just doesn't like the fact that I'm behind him. Seems like it. We're going to head home now. Probably about 15, 18 miles from home. Um, what a great ride it's been. Bike's running just smooth. It pulls so good. Um, it's a great balance between an inline and a V-twin. You know, like a Harley type of a V-twin. It's right there in the middle. You never really leave the power band with this bike. You know, it doesn't matter what, what gear you slip into. You stay right in that power band. And that's how it was designed. So really fun real fun uh, bike on the street it's very underrated too you know there's a lot of videos on the TL where they get dogged a lot uh, a lot of negatives about the bike you'll see I think it's a lot of it's because look at the beautiful colors here Wow very nice very nice um, I think a lot of the reason the TL gets a lot of flack is because it was put up against the flagship awesome Honda, you know, the RC51. It had a big shoes to fill, you know, when, when it went up against the RC51 and this thing came out, uh, the defeated, you know, RC51 was the victorious bike. So being in a shadow of such a great bike is probably the biggest reason that the TL gets a bad name but it's a great bike man anybody gets an opportunity to get one of these um, I would say snag them up because they're probably half the price of the Honda maybe, maybe even uh, less than half the price but I know the RC51s are ridiculous too very very expensive bikes and you're really not gonna find uh, too much more on it than this you know the looks are quite different but as far as uh, what you get in performance it's not gonna be that much different we're gonna wind this thing out we're gonna get close to home here this again um, I'd like to do more of this type of riding you know and uh, it's actually pretty therapeutic uh, a lot of people do different things to cope with stress you know this is really really great I, I think it would work for a lot of anybody who rides um, go on a joy ride don't use it as a transportation you know in many parts of the world motorcycles are used as transportation tools only if you use it as a you know just get away from the people get away from the hectic life get away from all the traffic and all the hustle and bustle of city life and just get out into the country and just enjoy the wind in your face and all of that i'm sure there's therapeutic uh significance to that we're going to wind this thing out right here. And there's our home. Back back home. What an awesome ride. Let's talk about this for a minute. We'll see you inside the garage in a minute. Okay. So we just got back 
from our ride on the TL1000R. Now we're going to be talking about this as we're riding. I'm going to show you all the stuff that we discussed when we're riding. So basically the review is right there during the ride. But uh, let's take a look at a couple things here. We want to see how many miles we did. So we started at 384 and we ended at 456. 384 and 456 is uh, 16, 56 and 16 is what? It's 72 miles. That's what we did. So a little more than I thought, but 72 miles. I want to take a look at, look how smooth this tire rolls. You know, I was a little um, weary about the plastic, but it's got enough on it where it's doing really good. I put the lithium grease on it, and it really it really helps a lot. I should probably clean up some of the lithium on the side there. The chain's uh, spitting it everywhere, but awesome running bike, man. I really enjoy riding this bike. So that was our ride on the TL. We're going to be putting that away for the season. Unfortunately, it gets cold here. We cannot ride uh, a, a long, uh, you know, full, full year round. But uh, so we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to try to, I'd like to squeeze in another little short ride. I'm not going to do 70, 80 miles, but maybe 20, 30 mile ride and take you guys along on the Harley. Maybe we can do that if we get another decent day. But as for right now, uh, we're going to start uh, thinking about putting things away and maybe uh, getting some projects going. And remember the music, we're going to be doing that. So please stay with us, okay? Uh, we appreciate everything you guys do, all the subscriptions, all the likes. We appreciate it. Keep them coming. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.